Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to actually be doing a slightly different video than usual because I saw something that was really, really cool. And instead of talking about stuff involving DFAs and whatnot, we're gonna talk about something that a lot of you are concerned with, which is Rice's theorem. So what does Rice's theorem actually say? So what is Rice's theorem? So we have to talk about these things which are called a property of Turing machine languages. So what is a property of Turing machine languages? Essentially what that means, and we have done a video about this before, what it means is that if you have two Turing machines and they have exactly the same language, then either both of them have this particular property or neither one of them do. In other words, we have a language which corresponds to Turing machines and the property says that it's either the case that both of them belong to the, belong to the property or neither one of them do. And what we specifically require for Rice's theorem is that the property be non-trivial. And what that means is that there is some Turing machine that has the property and some other Turing machine that doesn't. So the important thing is that it's a property of Turing machine languages, which means that if you have two Turing machines with the same language, either both of them have the property or both don't. So the only thing that matters in some sense is what is the language of the Turing machine? Because if you have two Turing machines with the same language and, for example, um, there's a qualification on the number of states, then it's not really a property of Turing machine languages anymore. Okay, so with that out of the way, what does Rice's theorem say? It says that every non-trivial property of Turing machine languages is undecidable. Okay, so undecidable, that just it means that there's no algorithm to, to figure out whether a Turing machine has the property or not. And what is the essential idea behind the proof? So what is the idea? It's just a reduction from the ATM problem. So ATM is asking whether a machine accepts an input. And all we're doing there is, in this reduction, is we're taking the Turing machine and input and constructing a Turing machine that either has the property or it doesn't depending on whether the original Turing machine and input given to us were, um, were in ATM or not. So the reduction will preserve whether it was, on, it was in ATM or it has the property here. So that's what Rice's theorem is, and we've done a video about this, but I want to show you something that's really, really cool. Notice that this says only undecidable. It doesn't tell us whether the language is recognizable, for example, or maybe not even recognizable, or its complement is not recognizable either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prove something called the strong rice theorem. Jokes about uh, rice, put them in the comments. So what does the strong rice theorem say? So here we're going to let P be a non-trivial uh, property of Turing machine languages. So exactly the same idea as before, and from the usual Rice theorem, we know that P is undecidable, uh, because that's just literally what P is. But now we're going to make an additional qualification on P. So let M be any Turing machine such that the language of that machine is sigma star. So in other words, this is just any Turing machine such that um, it, it accepts everything. Every Turing machine that accepts everything. So all of these Turing machines are either in the property P or none of them are because they all have the same language. All the ones that happen to have sigma star as their language. So if it is the case that these M's, these Turing machines are in uh, let, let me see, uh, yeah, are not in the property P. So it's important that it's not in the property P here, and we'll see why. Then what can we say? P is not recognizable, okay? So 
if we have that the the machines that have sigma star as their language always are not in the property p then p regardless of what p is then p is not recognizable immediately so how do we actually prove this so let's actually try to prove this well we're going to actually use a very similar idea we're going to try to reduce atm to um, the complement of p so the reason why we want to do that is well if you know what a reduction is you can flip the answers on both sides at the same time so this is equivalent to reducing uh, ATM bar to um, P without the complement and what do we know why do we want to do this well this thing right here is not recognizable so this thing is not recognizable and why is this helpful if P were recognizable then we can just compute this reduction right here and then solve the with the recognizer for p if p were recognizable but it that would imply that atm bar is recognizable but we know that it isn't okay so how do we actually do this here so we know that p is some non-trivial property because we specify that it is so let's let t be any turing machine um, in that property p because we know there is one because it's a non-trivial property so we're going to recognize ATM bar as follows so remember we're going to get some type of input M and W and we want to figure out whether M does not accept W or the input could be malformed so ATM without the bar has Turing machine and, and string input but the complement language could just have garbage input. So here we need to be very careful and say on input uh, MW. And the first step is to say if that string, whatever it is, does not encode a TM and a string, we should say accept because we're trying to recognize the complement language. If it doesn't have the right formatting, well, it's in ATM bar uh, by definition. So now let's try to do the next step. So now we know after step one that M and W it form a Turing machine in an input here. But I can't just feed M into the supposed recognizer for P here. So again, we need to make a um, an auxiliary uh, Turing machine. So construct a Turing machine I'm going to call N and what does it do? So on input uh, X because it can be it can be given any input and so what is its step here? It's going to run M on W and T on uh, not W on X in parallel and the second step of it is if either accepts then we will accept X so what in the world does this machine do oh that was a little cut off sorry so what in the world does this machine do well it gets some arbitrary input here and it runs the original given Turing machine M up here on input W and the T machine which is in the property P by definition on this arbitrary input X well let's see what happens either M accepts W or it doesn't so suppose M accepts W then that means that um, if M accepts W then no matter what T does the X string will be accepted because if either one accepts we accept well now suppose that M does not accept W well then that means the entire behavior of this machine N is identical to T it does exact it accepts exactly the same strings so if M does not accept W 
it behaves, this machine N, behaves like a machine with the property P. And if M does accept W, then it behaves like a machine that accepts everything, but those are the machines that don't have the property P in the first place. So let's continue then. So then what do we do here? What we're going to do is uh, run the supposed uh, recognizer uh, for uh, P on input N and output uh, what um, what that that recognizer says okay so let's just go that over that again so we make this machine n that has two behaviors it behaves like a, either this machine t which does have the property p or it behaves like a machine that accepts everything but we assumed that that such machine is not in the property P, so it, this machine N does not have the property P. So then that means that we have reduced ATM bar to P. So what can we conclude? We have a reduced uh, ATM bar to P, but we know that this one is not recognizable. So then we can conclude that P, uh, that P is not recognizable either. So I thought that was actually really interesting that you can actually really strengthen Rice's theorem. So testing whether a Turing machine's language is empty is, um, is undecidable. I mean, not recognizable. Because if you have a machine that accepts everything, it is not in the emptiness for Turing machine's language. So you can get a whole class of languages now really easily with this strong Rice theorem just by using uh, this idea of reducing from ATM bar to that particular problem. And the proof of using this particular Rice's theorem is almost identical to the other one because all that you would have to do is show that the machines with um, with sigma star as their language are not in that particular property and then you would immediately show that it is not recognizable from this. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to show this a different way. In fact, there are other ways you can show this and I'd be curious to see what other ways there are. If you want to support this channel further, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to contribute more, there's a Patreon link and Discord server link in the video description. And as always, I'll see you next time.